Dear students, we were in the chapter 2 of the physics that is human eye and the colorful world. Moving to the next that is uh, defects of vision. Okay. Which means what are the defects of the human eye when it comes to the to view the uh, objects. Okay. In order to get the image. Formation of the image on the eye when we see the objects. Okay. So what are the defects of the human eye? So we can classify into three categories. Okay. Mainly into three categories. One is the first defect is called as myopia or myopic eye. Myopia means it is also called as short sightedness. Which means you can see here what are the characteristics of uh, a person having myopic eye or a person having myopia he do, doesn't have problems in reading and writing means he can easily read and write at a shorter distance okay but he is having the problems in driving which means far away objects cannot be seen or that far away objects is not properly seen by the eye okay whereas Reading and writing nearby objects he can visualize very clearly. So that is known as myopia or short sightedness. The second one is hypermetropia. Okay. Hypermetropia means what? Long sightedness. Myopia means short sightedness. Hypermetropia means long sightedness. Exactly the characteristics of hypermetropia is opposite to that of myopia. You can see here a person is uh, having hypermetropia. He doesn't have the problems in driving, which means he can easily drive. He can see the far vehicles coming from far. Okay, he can see the vehicles at far away distance. Means he doesn't have the problems in driving, whereas he faces the problems in reading and writing. So that is the characteristics of the person who is having hypermetropia. Now the third one is presbyopia, or it is also called as old sight. Means. Presbyopia is observed in the persons who are old, okay, means age old persons or it is also called as old sight. Old age persons cannot read and write, okay. So for all these three defects, there is always the correction for it if you are using the proper lens, okay. And these defects, that is especially myopia and hypermetropia, it is due to the the eye lens or the defect in the eye okay so in detail we shall study in the next uh, videos about myopia how it is caused what is the correction hypermetropia how it is caused and what is the correction okay we will use the ray diagrams to explain this okay in the next videos okay students now let us go in detail with every defect of the vision the every defect of the human eye the first was myopia or myopic eye which is that myopia is also called short sighted net means the eye is capable of reading and writing visualizing the objects which are nearby but it is not capable of visualizing the objects which is at a far distance okay now so we have to keep in consideration the three factors here in order to understand this uh, that is uh, means throughout uh, whether it is myopia or uh, hypermetropia, three parameters we have to understand. One is the far point, near point, and the near point is also called least distance of distinct vision. That we should keep in mind. Now, let us begin this. Now, myopia or short sightedness. You can see here, this is a normal eye. This is a normal eye, and the object is situated at infinity. Infinity means a very large distance, if you can. Now, if my eye or if the normal eye is capable of seeing the object at a very very far distance no issue now you can see here when the object is at infinity the parallel rays are coming and it is getting focused on the eye lens that is convex lens eye lens now after the refraction through the eye lens you can see here all the rays are getting converged at the point on the retina whenever we say that all the rays are getting converged at one point on the retina the eye is capable of seeing that particular object means the image is formed on the membrane of the retina on the retina so this is normal eye 
Now, a person is having myopic eye or a person is having a defect myopia. Now, let us see here. Now, you can see here. In the second diagram, this is myopic eye or a person is having myopia. Now, you can see here, students. The parallel rays that I have drawn in green pen, okay, these green dotted lines, what I have drawn, these are the parallel rays which are coming. And you can see the red line in between the lines. So, let us call that as uh, the principal axis, okay. Why? Because it is also a part, like a ray diagram. Now, these parallel rays which are coming, you can see here, they are coming and at the aperture of the islands, they are getting converged, not, they are getting converged, you can see here the green dot, these parallel rays from the object which is at infinity, it is getting converged at a point, at a point in front of the retina, not on the retina, it is in front of the retina. So what is the actual case, now what we will do, this is normal eye, Okay, which is capable of seeing the objects which is at a far distance. But how much far? We have to set the target, right? Because we cannot, eye is not at all capable of seeing whatever the object is at infinity means. We cannot see the things, no? Or the eye is not capable of getting the image of the things which is very very far. So it is uh, unimaginable. So let us take a threshold or let us take a target some distance as far point. You can see here. F is the far point, means far beyond that far point or from the far point, considering the far point itself is a myopic eye. The eye is not capable of seeing the objects at the far point and beyond the far point. Now see here, this F is the far point, okay. Now, this is the myopic eye and whatever you can see here that the image that is coming, so the object at infinity or beyond the far point where actually if the far point is the target or if the far point is the threshold or it is the limit for which the normal eye could see the object means definitely you can see in the black lines the ray diagram it would have been formed at on the retina of the eye right if the objects were within the far point, not beyond the far point, considering the far point itself, then this would have not been the myopic eye. Seeing only the black rays, you can see that these black lines, you can see the converging rays are at or on the point of the retina. But you can see here, this is not so in myopic eye. Why? Because the object is far behind the far point or it is beyond the far point, that's why you can see the lines that which are green lines which are coming parallel to the principal axis, they are getting converged at a point in front of the retina, in front of the retina. So this is the reason for the problem of myopia or the defect of myopia. Now how to overcome this, okay, now I'll just read out the points here. Parallel rays from infinity are focused at a point in front of the retina. You can see here, these green lines are the parallel rays which are coming from the infinity and it, they are converging not on the retina, it is coming in front of the retina. So, how much is the far, uh, how much far is the uh, object situated? So, we cannot estimate, but we can have one particular limit. So, that limit is capital F called as far point. Now, far point and beyond far point, far point and beyond far point, you are having the myopic vision, okay. But far point, within the far point, you can see the rays of line, sorry, within the far point or less than this far point, the eye is capable of seeing the objects. That's why you can see the ray diagram, the rays are getting converged at the, on the retina, okay. But this is not case in the myopic eye, you can see the green lines that indicates that the converging rays, the parallel rays which are coming and getting converged is in front of the retina, right? It is in front of the retina, that's why there is a problem of myopia. Now how to overcome this problem? Now what is X and all, I shall do it in the next video, okay? Now just remember these points, okay? Now. 
the reason for this myopic eye is probably the two reasons one is increase in the curvature of the eyeball increase in the curvature of the eyeball or increase in the curvature length of the eyeball from the eye lens means this is the eye lens eye lens this is the curvature of the eyeball this keeps on increasing okay that is one reason because of the action of ciliary muscles okay one more thing is decrease in the focal length decrease in the focal length and so that the increase in the converging power so maximum converging power is there whereas there is decrease in the focal length so these two are the reasons for the myopic eye what is the reasons for the myopic eye one is increase in the length of the eyeball or increase in the curvature of the eye from the eye lens the second reason being decrease in the focal length so that there is maximum converging power so these are the two reasons for the defect of myopia now how to overcome this defect now to overcome this defect is by placing or oh yes by placing a concave lens concave lens in between that is in front of the eye lens in front of the eye lens and the object okay you are if you are placing a concave lens so that acts as the remedy now how to uh, have the correction of the myopic eye just carefully observe here now this is a myopic eye okay without this concave lens without this concave lens this diagram is exactly myopic eye now i have placed the concave lens in between let us understand now you can see here the black lines what i have drawn is the object at infinity they are coming okay now this f is the far point you have understood we have to set a threshold like far point okay that far point is the point beyond which the eye cannot see within which the eye can see okay now the parallel rays which are coming from the object or at a far distance from infinity they are actually coming and hitting the concave lens the aperture of the concave lens at first now what is the function of the concave lens just uh, imagine uh, or just recall the first case of concave lens image characteristics in concave lens first case when the image is formed at infinity you please go through that because that is the concept here you can see here as soon as the rays are coming from the infinity when the object is at infinity and falling on the aperture of the concave lens they are getting diverged you can see here these two are the divergent rays now these divergent rays appear to be coming when you draw the divergent rays backwards in dotted lines you can see here it is meeting at that f that capital f is nothing but this far distance threshold what we have said means that far distance capital f so they it is assumed this far distance capital f is nothing but for in the terminology of the a uh, lens it is focal length right this small f this capital f is nothing but focus or not focal length this capital f is nothing but principal focus as per the terminology spot we have used in image characteristics of concave lens this was the principal focus now that itself is the far distance here now you can see here that capital f means these convergent rays these conver sorry these divergent rays from the concave lens they appear to be coming they appear to be coming from the capital f you can see here so that is the characteristics the case one which means the image is formed at capital f now this is the correction okay now what we have to do so for a myopic eye when the object is at infinity we have to make sure that its image will come at f why because from f only the eye is capable of capable to see right from f only the eye is capable to see the exact clear picture of the object otherwise it cannot see so if you are placing the concave lens here the rays which are coming from the infinity first it will hit the concave lens aperture of the concave lens then the rays gets diverged if you bring back those rays side or backwards they appear to be coming from this capital f okay you can relate here which means the image is formed at capital f virtual image case 1 remember okay that virtual image is formed at capital f now you can see here 
when these rays are getting diverged they are coming and meeting at the aperture of the eye lens that is convex lens what is the function of the convex lens it is to converge so we are getting the converged image sorry converging rays are exactly on the retina you can see here on the retina that's why that is the concave lens is the remedy for the myopic eye okay the corrected myopic eye involves the concave lens in front of the eye lens okay so this is the concept or this is a remedy for myopia or short sightedness remember you should remember uh, uh, what practice all the ray diagrams very very important hmm? so this is the remedy thank you okay now students let us do some analysis for the myopia or short sightedness okay now see here we know that capital f is the far point okay far point of the myopic eye which means the eye is capable of seeing the object at the far point within the far point not beyond the far point it is like a threshold or the it is like a milestone or the target okay now that is represented by capital f so we have also seen that that far point capital f itself is nothing but the principal focus right as what we have seen as per the the analysis in the explanation we have seen now that f is nothing but the far point of the myopic eye now let this small x be the distance from myopic eye to the far point you can see here there is islands from the aperture of the islands till this far point capital f the distance i have named it as small x so let x be the distance from the myopic eye myopic eye means i am taking from the measurement from the islands from the myopic islands to the far point capital f now here you can see here what for correction for the myopic eye i have used concave lens what should be the focal length of the concave lens that we have to we need to understand from this okay now this let this small f be the focal length of the concave lens used okay this is the concave lens for correction we have to find out what exactly is the focal length of the concave lens why because it is uh, useless to find out the focal length of the defected lens that is eye lens okay why because we have used the corrected eye lens because of this concave lens only you are able to see the object at far point right so the new focal length what we are speaking it is with respect to the concave lens not with respect to the defected eye lens okay that is convex lens of course it does the its job but still since it is defected and we have replaced or oh, sorry we have used a concave lens in front of the eye lens we have to find what exactly is the focal length of this concave lens okay now let that be small f we have to find out that focal length of the concave lens now for this particular three cases also where is this object object is at infinity we have to make sure that that object comes at or you know yes the object should is visualized at capital f okay that is our intention but still we are not to make that we have used this concave lens but the object is actually at infinity so how you write that object distance small u is object distance it is at infinity that is the symbol of infinity okay now for that object which is at infinity you can see in this third diagram that the corrected myopic eye where is the image formed that is these extended lines from the divergent rays near the or at the concave lens these divergent rays are extended and it is formed at capital f means as per the ray diagram of case 1 of the convex lens this f was supposed to be the principal focus now this f is supposed to be the far distance far point now the image is formed at far point right so as per this corrected uh, myopic uh, uh, ray diagram okay now therefore that image distance is nothing but minus x why we are taking minus x sign conventions why because the image is formed to the left side of the concave lens left side means if you are moving against the incident ray means you have to take the distances to be negative that's why v is equal to minus x 
Okay. Now we know the Lenz formula. One by f is equal to one by v minus one by u. Now you substitute these two here. One by f is equal to one by v means minus x minus one divided by u is always infinity. Now you know that in mathematics one over infinity is zero. Now one by f is equal to this negative sign shifted to the numerator. It will become minus one by x minus zero. Okay, or one by f is equal to minus of one by x. Now, if you cross multiply it, minus f is equal to x, or f is equal to minus x. So, what did we understand from here? This focal length of the concave lens is nothing but this distance itself. Okay, I repeat, the focal length of this concave lens that is. Used for the correction, that focal length is nothing but the x. Negative sign indicates means it is towards means we are taking measurements towards left. Okay, which means that the focal length of the concave lens is equal to the distance from the myopic eye to the far point. Distance of this myopic eye means this distance capital X from this defected eye lens that is natural eye lens, right? That distance from the to the far point itself acts as the focal length for this concave lens with a negative sign f is equal to minus x. Now we shall move on to hypermetropy or long sightedness. So what do you mean by hypermetropy or long sightedness? It is a defect of the in the human eye in which the person is not able to. See the objects which are very closer by. Okay, and he can see the things which are coming at far distances. Okay, so that is known as hypermetropia or long sightedness. Okay, means long sightedness means he can see the things at longer distance and are able to see the things at shorter distance. Now, what is the shorter distance? In myopia, we had a discussion on far point. Where the far point is a very important show, whereas in hypermetropia, long distance, long sightedness, we have to concentrate on near point. Okay. Now there are three different cases. One is with respect to normal eye. The other one is with respect to hypermetropic eye. The third one is how to correct this hypermetropic eye or hypermetropia. Now you can see here a normal eye at Capital N. Capital N is the near distance, okay, or it is also called as least distance of distinct vision, which is also called as near point. Capital N is near point. So we all know that that least distance of distinct vision, okay, means the least distance, okay, at which our eye is capable of recognizing the particular object that has to be. Equal to small d is equal to how much? 25 centimeter. That 25 centimeter is the least distance at which we are able to see the things clearly, and we are able to visualize. So that is said to be the threshold. That is the near point. That is small d. Now, at any object which is at near point, that is n, at a distance that is small d from the aperture of the eye lens, you will get the converged rays. To be exactly on the retina, which means the image is formed on the retina for a normal eye. Now, what is the problem in the hypermetropic eye? As you can see here, this least distance of distinct vision at the near point n, this n for a normal eye is okay. Now, for a person having hypermetropia, he will see that n is shifted. At n shifted to n dash. For a person having hypermetropia, we will see that that particular least distance of distinct vision, that is small d, which is supposed to be 25 centimeter, is shifted beyond n further at a distance n dash. So obviously, that person will not get the converged rays after the refraction from the convex lens to be formed on the retina. So that's why you can see here in the ray diagram. You can see the dotted lines of the ray diagram indicates that it is with a normal eye. Okay, because you can see those dotted lines, those converging dotted lines are at exactly on the retina. Whereas, since 
in the hypermetropic person he will see the things or see that uh, near point is shifted to n to n dash you can see here those bold lines ray diagrams the incoming rays after the refraction they are converging beyond the retina you can see here the converging beyond the surface or membrane of the retina that's why that person is getting a blurred image he cannot see the objects clearly that's why he is having the blurred image so that happens to be in a hypermetropic eye understood what is the reason the near point is shifted to further more distance or it is shifted beyond to a point called n dash so that is the reason why the person is getting a blurred image because the image is formed beyond the retina not on the retina so what should be the remedy for the hypermetropic eye or hypermetropia so what is the correction so as we saw the correction in uh, myopia or uh, short sightedness may be incorporated a concave lens here we have to go for convex lens okay now the corrected hypermetropic eye you can see here you have placed the convex lens in between now how now this particular ray diagram how it is formed you have to get the relevance or you have to get the uh, resemblance from case 6 of convex lens ray diagram remember case 6 of convex lens ray diagram so what it was when the object is placed at placed in between the optic center and infinity when the object is placed in between optic center and infinity the image is formed behind the object right enlarged image you are getting so that concept we have to remember now you can see here this convex lens is placed okay in between optic center of the eye lens this is convex lens okay this is natural eye lens in between that optic center or in between this eye lens and this near point capital n you are placing the convex lens now what happens you can see here the rays from the n okay now what is our intention is to bring this blurred image back that is so that the image is formed on the retina so what we have to do whatever the image or the object that uh, the hypermetropic eye is seeing at the n dash we have to bring that to n right within that 25 cm range only we have to bring this particular uh, object that is seen by hypermetropic eye at n dash we have to make sure that we are bringing that object to the visible range to the that is near sightedness right so we have to bring that in so what is our intention we have placed the convex lens you can see here from n the incoming rays on the convex lens now what happens it gets refracted okay you can see the refracted rays coming out of this lens now how we have to because these two are not parallel these two are divergent okay when the rays is going divergent how to get the image k6 remember k6 here when the rays goes divergent how to get the image you have to bring those rays or you have to produce those ray lines backwards using dotted lines you can see here at this point when they are getting diverged this produce those points backwards so that you will get the exact location of n dash means whatever the eye the hypermetropic eye that was seeing the blurred image of the particular object that it was seeing at n dash now from n dash only you are getting what that particular image clearly why because you can see that that the object which was at n dash is now shifted to n why because the rays from the n upon uh, what when it goes on the the convex lens okay the rays goes diverged okay it goes diverged upon producing those rays back as per this rule okay you will get the point n dash which means this is also correct and this point is also correct which means to say that if both are getting synchronized n and n dash which means this particular object what this hypermetropic eye was seeing as a blurred image 
is now shifted to a point n n from n dash to n which means what this particular object is now has shifted to n means it is come under the visible range that is near point range or least distance of distribution of 25 cm <coughs> now when this convergent ray fall on this islands now the islands is capable of converging the rays at exactly on the membrane of the retina or exactly on the retina so this is how we have to correct the hypermetropic eye okay now we can understand okay now please remember for the correction of the hypermetropic eye in order to understand the ray diagram you have to thoroughly know the concept of that is the case 6 the last case of the image characteristics in convex mirror where the object lies between the optic center and the infinity for which the image is enlarged it is virtual and it is erect and it is formed behind the object now see here this is the object and now here it is the image it is formed behind okay that concept we have to remember in order to trace the ray diagram thank you okay. now we should go for the to find this uh, focal length of this new convex lens okay we have to find out the focal length of this new convex lens now we have to have certain parameters here to be discussed now let x dash you can see here x dash okay be the distance from eye lens from eye lens means defective eye lens that is hypermetropic eye that natural eye lens let x dash be the distance from the eye lens to the n dash n dash means shifted near point shifted near point in hypermetric hypermetropic eye so that is the x dash let x dash be the distance from the eye lens to n dash of the defected eye next let this small d this small d is nothing but what this is nothing but near point this is actual near point as observed by the normal eye so let this small d which is equal to the near point distance from the eye lens to the near point n okay of the normal eye now we have to find out what let small f be the focal length of this new convex lens let small f be the focal length of the convex lens used for correction so that focal length you have to find out now for that focal length lens formula that is 1 by f is equal to 1 by v minus 1 by u we have to find out how to get what is object distance and image distance right now what is that object distance now the object has come where at near point only at when the object is at near point you are able to get the correct vision right correct uh, image so that's why u is equal to minus d now you know pretty well why we have used minus d because we are moving from towards the left side of the optic center against the incident ray so against means negative so u is equal to minus d now where is image formed now you can see here image is formed at n dash right that is k6 as per the k6 of the convex lens so at n dash which means again it is also coming out towards the left side so that v is nothing but what is equal to minus x dash now see here this is the x dash okay this is x dash so v is equal to minus x dash that means from the optic center of the defected lens towards the n dash where the image is formed so let that image distance is equal to minus x dash now use the mirror formula 1 by f is equal to 1 by v minus 1 by u now substitute here 1 by f is equal to 1 by v v means what minus x dash 1 by minus x dash minus of take in the brackets 1 by u that is 1 by minus d enclose within the brackets okay again 1 by f is equal to bring this minus sign to the numerator so minus 1 by x dash so you can see here minus into minus is plus 1 by d now 1 by f is equal to 1 by d minus 1 by x dash or now how i have written here first i have taken the positive quantity next the negative fraction first for positive fraction the next is negative fraction i have taken that makes no difference okay now taking reciprocals on sorry first now what you have to do take the lcm so what is the lcm of the rhs x dash d is the lcm in the numerator what you will get x dash minus d numerator will get x dash minus d denominator this is the lcm that is x dash d now what you got 1 by f is equal to x dash minus d by x dash into d. Now taking reciprocals on both sides, what do we get? F is equal to 1 by f becomes f. Now x dash d will go to numerator, x dash minus d will come to denominator. Therefore, 
f is equal to x dash d by x dash minus d. So what we have got here we have got product and here we have got the difference. Understood? So this is the new focal length of what this corrected hypermetropic eye or this new lens convex lens what we have used so we have found out that focal length is equal to x dash t by x dash minus d thank you